Hi, this is Doug and Cindy. Welcome to Elder Law Practice Fivecast. Today we're going to be talking about caregiver contracts. So what is a caregiver contract? A caregiver contract is a contract between you as a caregiver and any other people who are going to be providing care for a loved one. Now typically the loved one is mom or dad or grandparent or You mean you need a written contract with your mom? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the way things are these days, right? (laughs) And it's not because you don't trust mom or mom don't trust you or you don't love mom, mom don't, there's none of that stuff. None of that. Uh, A written caregiver contract is necessary just to get things in writing, kind of get things established. Just think about if mom was contracting with an outside care company that a non-medical care company that comes in and provides care to help her do her daily tasks to make it possible for her to continue to stay at home. Uh, She would say I'll pay you X dollars an hour and in return you agree to perform these types of services for me and they keep a logbook of services, they write down everything they do, and they get paid. Well, that's understandable with an outside company because they're a company. You don't know these people. They're coming in and you got a contract, but you're her kid. She's your mom. Why do you need a contract? The main reason is down the road, if mom has to go to a nursing home, and there's a bunch of checks written from mom to daughter or mom to son, well then DHS, which in our state is the agency that administers the Medicaid program, and Medicaid is a program that pays long term for nursing home care after you qualify to receive it, they look at these checks and say, What was that? This says (laughs) from mom to Billy. Who's Billy? Well, that's that's me. Well, you're her son, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like mom has paid you a bunch of money over the years. What's that all about? Mm-hmm. Well, I did some stuff for her. And unless you've got something in writing, what it looks like is mom transferred money to you, which they consider as uncompensated transfers or a gifts. Gift. Yeah. And sometimes they would need, they would say, oh, well, we're going to assess a impose a penalty period, which is a period of time before Medicaid would pay. Okay. So, a contract between you and your loved one, you're providing the care for them. It lists in there the type of care that you're going to provide. You're going to be reimbursed for using your vehicle, for taking them to the doctor. It's all spelled out in there. Now, this is not legal advice. So, if you get a care contract, you go to an attorney and you get that done right. Because, especially like Doug said, if you apply for benefits down the road, you're going to need a well-drafted contract. It's not legal advice, and it's also not a do-it-yourself project. I mean, this is important stuff, and it's got to be done correctly because if it's not, it it may not work. So get with your attorney. uh, Make sure it's done correctly. uh, And don't try to just print something off the uh, the, the internet or the web, you know, and do it yourself. Make, get with someone because there's always why are we doing it and it's got to be constructed in a proper manner to work in your uh, in your state. So get with an elder law attorney if if this is a thing, if this is something you need to be planning for and if your loved one is declining, it's important to do, It's obviously it's important to do while mom or dad still has uh, cognitive ability to understand what they're doing and read it and sign it. Uh, so it's got to be done in advance. And there's a lot of things to think about, like what, what would mom need help with? She may not need help with everything, but she may need some things. And you may also want to inter- interview outside caregivers. It's likely you can't be there and be on 24 7 most people can't no but um, absolutely not yeah so you may need some outside assistance anyway so this is a part of your plan it fits in with the rest of your legal documents and the plan that you that your loved one has for the rest of their life it names who the caregivers are who's being cared for the different types of services that are going to be provided, the the rate that you'll be paid, like and Doug said, 
you have to write it down and record what you're doing and as you're paid this counts as income to you if you're a caregiver so you have to follow all the rules but it is very important part of a life plan and you would have some things in writing like like what are we going to do for mom i mean maybe uh cooking uh make sure she's got three meals a day cleaning housekeeping whatever types of things and you may say i do those things anyway but here's an important point you can't go back and retro it I, we've been asked for people before well i've been <laughs> yeah. doing that stuff for years. mom like for the past five years can i date the contract mm -hmm. like five years ago and then just let her write me a big check for all of this time no. that i've been doing no. no it's at the point in time you start and go forward but <laughs> if you are doing that and she needs the help or it looks like she's going to mm -hmm. need help in the future it's an important thing to meet with her attorney hopefully an elder law attorney uh, explain to them what all things you are doing and uh, she'll be there to you know participate in a conversation and say yeah my son or my daughter's doing this anyway and I want to pay them they should be paid but it's got to be done properly and you know this may not work in all states again that's why you get with an elder law attorney someone that knows the system knows the Medicaid system and she's not in a nursing home now but you know that might be on the horizon down the road so it's just got to be done correctly to make sure it will work in in your state and it's better to do it sooner rather than later because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring so I think that's the main thing we need to cover today about caregiver contracts or sometimes you hear them called care agreements but basically it's a contract between you and your loved one where they pay you and yes right. this is taxable income and you perform certain services for them record what you do make sure you get it done properly and do it sooner rather than later so thanks for joining us today in our five cast hope you have a great rest of the day we'll see you on the next video